the Holy Spirit is the spirit of holiness, and it is important you understand what it takes to walk with the spirit of holiness. Jesus Christ said, the Holy Spirit will abide with you, with us forever. Not for some days, not for some months, not for some years, forever. And I want to believe it is our responsibility to know what it takes to walk with the Holy Spirit so that we will enjoy His presence in our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. We praise you, Father in heaven. Thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will pray the Father that he would give you another help, another comforter. Thank you for the prayer, Jesus. Thank you, the Holy Spirit has come. Holy Spirit is with us. Holy Spirit is here, our comforter, our strength, and our teacher. Thank you. For the blessing of the Holy Spirit, thank you. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. Amen. The scripture we are looking at is teach Romans chapter 1 verse 4. Romans chapter 1 verse 4 that says that Jesus Christ was declared to be the Son of God with power. Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of Holiness. And Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of Holiness. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Holiness. It's not just about power. It's not just about the miraculous. not just about the gifts. This is a dimension of the Holy Spirit, we need to know that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of holiness. Holiness. Holy Spirit is in his own class. In his own class. We have to ascend. We have to come to that place. If we truly want to walk with the Holy Spirit, we want to know him, we have to ascend. We don't have to limit the Holy Spirit to just the prayer language, being able to pray in tongues, the manifestation of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit. Um, all that, I want, to, I want you to know that they are important. Walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit, we need them. We need them as believers. But there is also this dimension of the Holy Spirit that is called the spirit of holiness that every believer has to be aware of, that the Holy Spirit is holy as his name is. For a believer that does not appreciate this, this dimension of the Holy Spirit, you would think that Holy Spirit is a personality that you can grab and use without knowing there is a need for work. And working with the Holy Spirit require you appreciate this dimension. Of the Holy Spirit called holiness. Jesus Christ said to us in John chapter 14, verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Listen carefully to the words of Jesus. Jesus said, I will pray, I will ask the Father. And the Father, I will ask the Father to give you another, I'll give us, the, give us another, another helper, comforter, strengthener, teacher, standby, advocate, intercessor, that he will abide with you forever. And this is the question I've been asking. If the Holy Spirit is to abide with you, with me, if to abide with us forever, don't you think it is important we know what it takes to walk with the Holy Spirit so that what He came to do in you and through you will become a reality? Don't you think so? 
if you have a friend, if you have a friend that you're not interested in knowing what makes your friend happy, what makes him sad, but you just want to relate with this person without taking time to know the person, do you think that that relationship will last or is there really relationship there? Is there anything called relationship there? This is what I think of this wonderful personality called the Holy Spirit. There are many believers, many believers, we don't even want to know what it takes to have a relationship with the many believers. Many believers are interested in what the Holy Spirit can do for me. That that uh, entitlement mentality, entitlement mentality. What is in it for me? What can it do for me? Holy Spirit is just there for me. Get this done. Get that done. And, and it makes it look as if, oh, this thing is about Father Christmas, Santa Claus, that is just there to make us happy, which is the same mentality the Israelites had while they were in the wilderness. They could not enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They could not. Because they were not ready to walk with the Holy Spirit. They were not ready, ready to listen, listen, listen to the Holy Spirit. They were not ready to obey the Holy Spirit. They just wanted things to be done for them. They just wanted the Father to take care of them, fight their enemies. But the Father said to them, just listen to my Holy Spirit. Obey Him. And if you do, I will be well with you. They refused. So if you read the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 63, I want to read it. Isaiah 63 verse 10. You see, you see our father demonstrator showing his displeasure. You also read it in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. But let's read it from here first. Isaiah 63 10. But uh, Okay, let's say from 11. In all the affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bore them and carried them all the way, all the days of old. Verse 10. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. They opposed his Holy Spirit. They, they made his Holy Spirit sad. What did the Father do? <laughs> what did God do? He turned himself against them as an enemy, and he fought against them. The Father who brought them out of Egypt, the father who fought for them in Egypt, the father that made a way in the Red Sea for them to come to cross the Red Sea. This same Abba father turned against them, fought against them. Why? Because they opposed the Holy Spirit and they grieved the Holy Spirit. They made the Holy Spirit sad. The question is, the present church, that is you and I, if we oppose the Holy Spirit, if we grieve the Holy Spirit, do you think the Father will be happy? Oh, okay, all oh, because of Jesus Christ, we belong to a different covenant. Yes, we are other grace. Listen to me. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. The same word you use there. Here, they grieve the Holy Spirit. And now we are told in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't take the Holy Spirit for granted. Don't, don't make the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit sad. Because it's all that we, you have. It's all that we have. The earlier you understand this, the better for you. You see, you have believers who spend time in prayer, in fasting, trying to get results. They go from pillar to post, from mountain to the valley because they want solutions. But the truth is this. The solution you need is the Holy Spirit. I say it again. The solution you need as a believer is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is everything. It's everything. Imagine, it's your comforter. Can't you get it? It's your comforter. You need comfort. He's the one to give you comfort. Your strengthener. They want to strengthen you in time of challenges, trouble. Even when there's no trouble, just is there to strengthen you. The Bible tells us of Jesus Christ when in the garden, he was threatened by an angel. But the Holy Ghost today is our strengthener. He's your teacher. What knowledge do you need? The Holy Ghost will teach you whatever knowledge. Whether in the area of academic or spiritual things, marriage, finance, business, is ready to teach you. It's your standby. Do you understand that? Standby is always waiting. 
Wait it to know what help you are going to ask for so that it would help you. It's your standby. And it's your, it's your advocate, the one pleading, pleading on your behalf, talking to the father for you. Oh, dear father, please do it for Patrick. Father, do it for Patrick. Father, do it for Patrick. Father, have mercy. He's pleading on your behalf, pleading on my behalf. And the same Holy Spirit is your helper, helper. The Christian race is not race that is something that uh, can be done by human strength. No, it, it takes the Holy Spirit for us to walk in holiness, certification, accept, walk in the identity we have in Christ Jesus. It's not by might. Bible tells us clearly, Zechariah, that it is not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What is my point here? Let us return to the Holy Spirit. We have, we have had Christianity of running from one mountain to one valley, then uh, oh, there is latest revelation here. We run for the revelation. We run to the revelation. Oh, there is what something new here. Oh, now where the power is is water. Now it's mato or akachif. Now the next is this. Listen, Holy Spirit is more than enough. Holy Spirit is more than enough. You know the problem of man is this. The problem of man is this. Man has a way of always looking down on the blessing the Father gives to him. That is the problem of man. Man has a way of looking at, okay, why are you giving me only this? He should have given me other things, which is the same problem we see in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, the, the Bible tells us that God said to Adam, he said, of all the fruits in the garden, you are free to eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil don't eat. That is a tree that became of, uh, of great interest to Adam and Eve. That what is it about this tree? What is it about this tree? What is it about this tree? It had other trees, other trees to eat freely, but it was that one. Until they had the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil and lost their place. Then reality don't know that. Oh, we should have done that. We should have made this mistake. That is a problem of man. For the believer, some of us is like Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit is, is not enough. I think we need to we need to get some other uh, some uh, extra biblical revelation, some things we can do to make to get power to get results. Stop all of that. Stop all of that. I said to someone, I said, if you could give three months, only three months to the Holy Spirit, three months of fellowship with the Holy Spirit, your life. Will be transformed. I told I just said, okay, it was a matter of del deliverance that uh, it was going through some demonic oppression, some challenges, family issues. I said, listen, if I believe in deliverance and by the grace of Jesus Christ, I have seen the Holy Spirit, you know, deliver people through my life and the ministry has given me from the from spirit of death, from insanity, all of these things. But the thing is, we don't need we don't need that route. I'm talking, I'm talking to the believers. If we all know the Holy Spirit. Think of a man by name Obedidom. Obedidom, I would describe Obedidom as a man that David sent us to death. <laughs> I would describe that way because David was afraid of the Ark of the Covenant, that is the presence of God, which is simply the Holy Spirit. Because Uzzah touched, Uzzah, Uzzah, Uzzah touched the Ark of the Covenant and was killed by the by the Lord. Because of that, David became afraid and said, no, the ark must not come to my house. And he decided that the ark should go to the house of Obed Edom. And the Bible tells us that within a period of three months, the life, the family of Obed Edom <laughs> was transformed. Everything changed for good. And the news came to David and David said, I must have the ark back. What does that tell us? What it tells us is simply, if you can simply give yourself to the Holy Spirit for three months, only three, start with three, three months of fellowship, three months of uh, put it to practice, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion, the fellowship, the sharing together, partnership, that same word, 
Comradeship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That word fellowship is where your miracle is. It's where your breakthrough is. Spending time in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Spending time to love the Holy Spirit. Spending time to get to know the Holy Spirit. Spending time to pour out your heart to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I want to know you. Do it as he leads you. For a start, you could wake up in the morning, early hours of the morning, and you are just there with him, sing to him. I don't want to give you a formula, but just start from somewhere. Talk to the Holy Spirit. You are building a relationship. And the good news about this is that the Holy Spirit, who is eager to reveal himself, to make himself known, yes, in doing that, you will get to know Jesus Christ even better and deeper. If the Holy Spirit is eager to do this, listen to me, Holy Spirit will become so real in your life. And when the Holy Ghost is real in your life, devils will leave you. <laughs> the reason devils go and they come back is because the devil knows that you are empty. You pray to us, you have prayer language, but the, whole, the devil knows that you are empty. You are empty of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let your house become the, the that that uh, become like the house of Obedidon. Devils will run from your house. Your business, devils will run away. Your marriage, devil, devils will run away. But if you are just simply looking for a pastor to pray for you, a prophet, a minister, cast out devils, and that becomes your house of a refuge, it's okay. But I'm telling you, the church has gone beyond that. This is this is a call to return to the Holy Spirit. If you return to the Holy Spirit and then begin to walk with Him, your life will change. I repeat myself. The Holy Spirit is all that we need. It's all that we need. But unfortunately, we are taking him for granted. We are taking him for granted in church. We just, we just want him to solve our problems. We don't want relationship. We don't want fellowship. And the Holy Spirit does not want it that way. The Holy Spirit does not want it that way. He wants to help you to enjoy your inheritance in Christ. He wants to help you to enjoy freedom in Christ. He wants to help you to enjoy... Uh, abundance in Christ. He wants to help you to, to enjoy divine health, freedom from satanic oppression, demonic oppression. He wants to help you. But how will the Holy Ghost help you? How will the Holy Ghost help you when you don't want Him? What I mean by you don't want Him is because you don't want relationship. You don't want relationship. You want, simply want His power. He does not want that. It's like, it's like you're trying to use Him. And that is not what... Uh, that is not the way he wants to. He wants to function. He wants someone that will open his door, the door of his heart. Say, Holy Ghost, I want to have a relationship with you. There he goes, and you will enjoy the Holy Spirit with your family, your ministry, your 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 business, your career, the testimony of the house of uh, of uh, Laban, Laban the uncle also the uncle of. Uh, of Jacob will become your testimony just when the Holy Spirit becomes real. I'm talking about his manifest presence. We are, we are living in the days of the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. I'm saying when the, the tangible presence, that is the glory of the Holy, the glory of God. We are living in the days of his of his manifest presence again. When we don't have to cry, have all the BG cry, cry, cry. No, we simply tell the Holy Spirit to do his work. We welcome the Holy Spirit because he's free and he will come. Based on relationship, on the account of relationship, did you get that? It's just like putting money money into the bank. Because you have money in the bank, you can make demand that you want some money from the bank. Yeah, that's how it works. If you have relationship with the Holy Spirit, you can make demand on that relationship. And the Holy Spirit will show up. And the Holy Spirit will bless you. But if you don't have a relationship, that is when we do all the cry, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, 20 times, 21 times. So listen to me. Get to know Holy Spirit. Just like that. Your presence will bring His presence. When you show up, the Holy Spirit will show up. I'm not talking about, oh, let's round it up here. <laughs> Father in heaven, thank you so much for the wonderful Holy Spirit. Thank you, dear Father in heaven, for the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, for giving us your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you for helping us to return to you. Some of us have existed in relationship with you, but we got distracted. Some of us are hungry to know you, but we don't know how to go about it. And some of us do not even know you at all. So we are asking tonight, Abba Father, 
open our hearts. You know how to do it by yourself. I don't have the formula. Help my brothers, help my sister, and help me too to know the Holy Spirit. Help us, take us deeper, take us deeper to experience the reality of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord, for this new day of the manifest presence of God upon the earth. That in the midst of darkness upon the earth and gross darkness, of, gross darkness upon the people, thank you for the Holy Spirit is rising upon us. The Holy Ghost is rising upon us with the revelation of the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you in Jesus Christ's name. So let's agree in prayer together quickly for every oppression, every demonic torment. Like I told you, with the Holy Spirit, we don't cry for miracles. We don't cry for signs and wonders. They just happen with ease, with the Holy Spirit. When I mean with the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about relationship. That is the key. Relationship is the key. You make demand based on the relationship you have with the Holy Spirit. Based on relationship. When there's no relationship, that is when you that is when work, flesh is involved. With relationship, things just happen. He speaks to you, he guides you, he, th- he, uh, he gives you signs, signals. When you call on the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit shows up to get the job done. So let's agree tonight. I don't know what you are believing the Father for. I don't know what your heart desire is. It could be healing. It could be deliverance from oppression of the devil. Maybe for financial uh, miracle. Let's agree in prayer for the Holy Spirit to do something for you. I know he loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. It does. Father in heaven, I thank you for my brother. I thank you for my sister. And I thank you for that miracle they need right now. Whether it's healing, deliverance from oppression of the devil, or finance, Whatever the miracle is, Father, I'm asking because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, that uh, there will be intervention for my brother, for my sister. I'm asking for intervention. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. I welcome you, our special guest from heaven. Our, our special guest from heaven, I welcome you to get the job done. That Jesus Christ, we take the glory for my brother, for my sister. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For the testimony that you have just given to your people. It is done. It is done in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you for the miracle for the testimony in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. That is it. Give thanks to the Father for your testimony. Give thanks to the Father for your healing. For your healing. Just praise your blessing. And I know that uh, the Holy Spirit is waiting for deeper relationship with you. This way we round up. I trust the Holy Spirit to strengthen you. I will appreciate that you let someone know the day we are living in, the day of His manifest presence. Let someone know, know simply means get this, uh, this fellowship, this uh, what we just heard, share it. Let someone receive this word that we need to return to the Holy Spirit. We need to know the Holy Spirit. If, there is, if, if you must read a book this December, the year 2024, Read books on the Holy Spirit. Read books, listen to messages on the Holy Spirit. You have read books and books and books without reading book on the Holy Spirit. Now, start reading books on the Holy Spirit. Start listening to messages on the Holy Spirit. Other books you have been reading, thank God for the knowledge. Now it's time for you to have personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. This is the time. Thank you for being part of the fellowship. I appreciate your time. Bye-bye.